You know that saying, everything but the kitchen sink? Yeah, that applies here. It's very rare to see a new phone release that checks every box. For some reason, manufacturers love to leave out features that a somewhat sizable audience actually wants. This year, Huawei didn't do that. I'm Matt Gonzalez with Buffalo, and this is the review of the Mate 20 Pro. Okay, before we get started, I have to say that Huawei did invite us out for the launch of this phone and to test it out. But this is not a sponsored video. And in the 10 days that I've used the phone, I have found things that I don't like. And don't worry, I'm not going to try to hide that. Phones these days tend to follow a pattern when it comes to build. But the Mate 20 does a few things differently. There's a metal frame and a glass back like you might be used to, but this has what Huawei calls the hyper optical pattern, which is this etched design that for one, gives you a little bit more grip and also drastically helps with fingerprints. The best way I can describe this is it's like those hologram lenticular images from the 90s where you see one image, you turn it, there's another image there and it has that pattern. It's almost exactly like that. I've never seen this on any other phone, but I like it a lot, especially in this emerald green color. On the back, you also see another unique design cue, the camera. I'll cover this camera extensively in a second, but I like the approach Huawei took with this arrangement. Symmetry is something Huawei focused on during the launch and it shows here. That 6.3 inch screen is also solid. It's a 1440 by 3120 OLED panel, has vibrant colors, it's sharp and big. There is a bit of a yellow hue off axis, but that's about it. It's a great screen. And also it doesn't feel very big in the hand because of the 19.5 by nine aspect ratio. There is more to the screen though, but it's not the actual panel, but what's above and beneath it. There's a notch, yes, notches are nothing new, but there is a good reason for it here, 3D face scanning. This isn't like what some manufacturers implement that just kind of takes a picture of your face and reads it. This is very similar to what Face ID on the iPhone does. There's a dot projector, an IR camera, and blaster, a camera. It's a real face unlock that allows for convenience while still actually being secure. It works really well, and in my testing, I could not trick it. It's my default unlock mode on this phone. There is another trick here though, an in-screen fingerprint reader. So you get the fingerprint scanner, but you don't have to put it somewhere else on the phone. It works, it's decently fast, it's definitely more finicky than a traditional fingerprint scanner. You sometimes have to try a few times and it's definitely not as fast, but the option is there, it's still fun to use every single time, and that's great to see. The rest of the hardware is just a slew of top of the line specs. Kirin 980 eight core processor, which isn't the Snapdragon 845 for once in a phone this year, but I found it to perform very well. Never really experienced lag or had to wait for animations to happen. And I never had any issues running any app I threw at it. It also has six or eight gigabyte options for RAM, 128 or 256 gigabyte options for storage, dual SIM, 4.5 gigabit per second LTE USB-C. It has expandable storage through a new nano SD card, which Huawei created, which is interesting because it's not the standard micro SD that we're used to. Although Huawei did say they are working to make this a little bit more popular. So hopefully we see in the other phones, but overall, this is a powerhouse. And powering all that is a 4,200 milliamp hour battery, which is not only huge, but I have found to be excellent. I can easily get through a day and a half with normal to heavy use. So watching a few videos, looking at emails, surfing Twitter and Instagram, battery was just overall great. But that leads to one of my favorite, favorite features of the phone, charging. So there are three different charging methods here. First is the 40 watt supercharger included in the box. Yes, 40 watts. That's almost what you use to charge a laptop. Now this means that you can charge up to 70% in 30 minutes. And for a real world test, when I took the phone out of the box for the first time, it was at 80%. I plugged it in and watched a single kind of long, but not too long YouTube video. And the phone was fully charged. This is a great feature. Although there is something to be said about how long this battery is going to last getting charged that fast, but I'll take the trade off. You also get fast 15 watt wireless charging. This is about the fastest that you can get right now, but more interestingly, you can reverse wireless charge. So basically your phone turns into a battery bank. It's a very slow charge granted, but charging nonetheless. And if you're someone like me who almost always carries two phones, having this feature is very nice. Okay, before we get to camera, I wanna talk software. Out of the box, it's running Android Pie, which is great to see, but it's a heavily skinned version called EMUI 9. I gotta be honest, 
I don't like this. It's packed with features like a one-handed UI, digital balance for time management, a magazine screen lock that changes what appears on your lock screen, and it's a little more organized than EMUI 8. But it still feels too messy, and there are just too many options that mostly get in the way or get lost. Like I said up front, you are getting everything but the kitchen sink here. So if you want it in a phone, you'll probably find it here, but it feels heavy and still unorganized. But luckily, even though it is a heavy skin, performance is great. Apps open fast, navigation is smooth and fluid, and this goes across the board that Kirin 980 is doing a great job running apps. Okay, let's talk camera. Huawei has pushed itself to the forefront of mobile photography, and it didn't stop with the Mate 20 Pro. This is probably the most full-featured camera system on a phone right now. When Huawei invited us out for the launch, we were able to take the phone around London and try it in the real world. And for these environments, it's pretty great. There is a 40 megapixel main shooter and an eight megapixel telephoto camera. Nothing really new here. We've seen this on the P20 Pro before, but instead of a monochrome camera, there is now a 20 megapixel ultra wide camera. So in one phone, you have telephoto, wide and ultra wide. Not too many phones can say that. So how does it perform? Well, in short, the camera is capable of taking some great photos, ones that are sharp, saturated, and overall solid. It has a great HDR mode that usually gives you detail in the shadows while not blowing out the highlights. To my eyes, it's not quite as good as what you get with the Pixel or iPhone XS, but it's much better than not having it at all. The processing in the images also loves that sharpness slider. This really comes down to personal preference, but to my eye, I could use less artificial sharpness and a tad less saturation. But you get an awesome focal range, which you can't really get in any other phone right now. And the resolution of the main camera really comes in handy. Night mode is also a useful feature, letting you get a lot more detail in very dark situations. So overall, the camera is great but I think there are a few key points that would make this the absolute best camera out there. Luckily, that is all mainly software related, so hopefully we see an update to that. The Mate 20 Pro is the most well-rounded device I have seen to date. Is it perfect? No, there is of course room to improve. The camera is solid, but sometimes the processing can be a bit much. EMUI 9 is still a bit heavy and not as polished as it could be. The price is a bit high and it's not available in the US, which for those of us who live here is a bummer. The starting price of a thousand euros is also higher than many other phones on the market. But past that, it's hard to find a phone that packs the same features that are found here. If you're looking for a phone that packs as much as possible into a great looking package, I don't think you can go wrong here. Huawei kind of hit it out of the park this time. But I wanna know what you have to say. Let us know in the comments, what do you think of the Huawei Mate 20 Pro? Is this a phone you would buy? Especially if you're here in the US, is this something that you would import or use? I'm interested to hear that. But if you enjoyed this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. I wanna thank you all so much for watching. I'm Matt Gonzalez with Techno Buffalo, and see you next time.